Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another Game 3 Struggle. Today we're going to talk about a first price sealed bid auction with two players. Here's what we're going to talk about today. The timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and start talking about this first price sealed bid auction. What is a first price sealed bid auction? Well, a first price sealed bid auction is a situation in which we've got two players, Bill and Dave. There's a piece of art in the middle of the room and each of Bill and Dave are going to write down how much they want to bid for the art, how much they want to pay if they win the art. They are going to make those bids separately so that the other person can't see what they're writing down. They're going to seal them in an envelope and drop them in this beautifully drawn bid box. Then after the auction is over, one person who is not a player is going to open up both those envelopes, figure out who has bid the highest price, and the person who bid the highest price will win the piece of art and they're gonna go ahead and pay the price of their bid. That's why it's called a first price bid. The reason it's called a sealed price bid is because they have put those bids in sealed envelopes that the other person see. Now, to make this have a little more structure, we're gonna say that Bill and Dave value the art somewhere between zero and one. It's gonna be a uniform distribution. We're gonna let them bid anything they want, any real number that's greater than zero. Like we said, the winner has the highest bid. They're gonna pay the highest bid for the price what about the utility of getting the art? We're going to say that the utility of winning is just equal to how much they value the art minus how much they bid or like how much they value it minus the cost of the art. We're gonna say that if you lose the auction, then the utility is zero. You don't win anything, but it's not like you have any negative consequences for putting in the bid. There's no cost to putting that bid. So if you lose the auction, you're just gonna walk away with nothing. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but I sometimes like to put this more into like sort of a game tree, just so I can kind of think more clearly about it. So we've got Bill and Dave. I'm going to put Bill's payoffs in blue and Dave's payoffs in green. What's going to happen? Nature or the distribution is going to randomly assign the valuation of the art to both Bill and Dave. Then Bill is going to make a bid. Dave is going to make a bid. They're doing it simultaneously, but we can write it sort of as a sequential game. It's basically the same thing. And then we are going to see what happens. How does Bill's bid stack up to Dave's bid? If Bill has the higher bid, then he is going to get the payoff of his valuation minus his bid. Dave is walking away with nothing. A tie is pretty unlikely considering that we have every real number between zero and one. But if for some reason that happens, then they're each going to take away half of the payoff if they win. And if Dave's bid is bigger than Bill's bid, then well, Bill gets nothing and Dave gets his valuation minus the bid that he put in. All right, so the way we are going to do this is we are going to start thinking about this from Dave's perspective. Dave is trying to maximize his expected payoff. So first, before we get into any sort of math, let's just think more conceptually about what expected payoff is in this situation. So here in this expected payoff, what we've got is he's trying to maximize the probability of winning times the payoff of winning, plus the probability that he loses times the payoff that he loses. Further, we know that if he loses, he's walking away with nothing, so we can just zero that part out. And how does he win? Well, that win is conditional on what he bids. So really, the probability that he wins is really just the probability that his bid is higher than Bill's bid. All right, so now we're kind of thinking, all right, well, now what are we going to do? Well, now I'm going to introduce the first trick. So I said in that intro slide, there are two tricks. What is the first trick? Well, Rather than choosing a bid, Dave is going to pretend to have a certain valuation. The reason we're doing this trick is because we know that if I, as Dave, value the piece of art higher, I'm willing to bid higher. It's not the case that if I value the piece of art more, I want to bid less. No, if I value the piece of art more, I want to bid higher. So now what we are trying to do through this is to show that Dave's ideal fake type or his fake valuation is actual valuation. So we're going to choose some theta tilde D or Dave's fake type so that his optimal bid is the bid of Dave's fake type. So we are Dave, we get to choose a bid for ourselves or a B sub D for Dave's bid. And we're maximizing the probability that our bid is higher than Bill's bid. And that's gonna be times the payoff that we get for winning, which is our actual valuation minus our bid. All right, well, we're just turning that into a fake type problem. So here it is turned into the fake type problem, where now instead of a bid, it's a bid function of our fake type and everything else is gonna remain the same. Well, really, if Bill and I as Dave are both thinking about the same bid function, that means this problem is really just a problem of whether or not my fake type as Dave is higher than Bill's valuation. So that's the only change I've made here. 
And we know that the probability that my fake type is higher than Bill's true valuation, well, this is really just the CDF of the valuation distribution, which we know is going to be uniform in a second. I'm going to distribute this CDF across to get to this step. Now I'm ready to take a first order condition. And this is just going to be some basic calculus. I put G prime here, but we know that this is really the PDF of the distribution. So this is little g of Dave's fake valuation. So this is the first order condition. So now what are we going to do? Well, now we're going to use the second trick because this is a first order condition. I can add stars here. And the reason that I can add stars here is because if we are taking the first order condition, we know that the optimal fake type for Dave is going to satisfy the fact that it's going to be his true valuation. That's something we're trying to prove as we go further. So I am just going to replace all the fake valuations of Dave with just Dave's actual valuation. So that's how I got to this step right here. I take this CDF. This is the derivative of the CDF, which I know is just the PDF. So I'll just do that real quick. And then I'm just going to keep going. I know that this right here, when we took the first order condition, well, that's just the derivative of this guy. So I can just add D over D theta. This is really D theta D. So I'll add that back in. And now I also know that I can take the derivative of the integral of something and it'll just be equal to the original function. So I can take the derivative of the integral of this guy and that is exactly equal to this guy. And the reason I'm doing that, I know that seems kind of strange, but the reason I'm doing that is I just want to cancel these derivatives because I really don't want any derivatives in my final function. So now I am solving for the bid function. The whole thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show that Dave's optimal bid as a function of evaluation is just going to be some function of his actual evaluation. So I know that if I solve for the bid function given Dave's evaluation, I'm going to get this just from some simple algebraic manipulation. All right, now we're using the uniform distribution. So the PDF of the uniform distribution is pretty easy. It's just one. And the CDF is just equal to theta D. There needs to be a D here, 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 and here. So I'll just add that in real quick. That means that this guy right here is just going to be one half times theta D quantity squared. So if I plug that in here, what I'm going to get, maybe I'll put this in green so that it's a little easier to see. I'm just going to get that B star of theta D is just going to be equal to one over two times theta d, and now I am done. Now, because this is a symmetric game, I know that if Dave's optimal bid is half his true valuation, I know that Bill's optimal bidding strategy is also going to be half his valuation. So maybe in here, I'll just add another box and I'll just say that B star of theta b or Bill's evaluation is just half of Bill's evaluation. Now we're done. So hopefully this gives you a little more intuition on how a two-player first price sealed bid auction works and how to solve for the optimal bidding strategy. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time on another case of Econ Struggles.